Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Simu. This show is brought to you by the last man standing with LoserPool.com. Lucas Torreira has told the media that he's been satisfied with his first season in English football. He has spoken of the lifestyle not being as enjoyable as that in Italy. But, I mean, it isn't, is it? I mean, the food's not as good, the weather's not as good, etc, etc. But what it has done is it's given those who have nothing worthwhile to write about the opportunity uh, to cause a shitstorm out of nothing. And uh, please don't be naive. Please don't read into those comments too much. Um, You know, Lucas Torreira was speaking openly. There are, of course, reports linking him with a move to Milan. And in my opinion, there's not much substance to those rumours. Marco Giampaolo has just got the job there replacing Gennaro Gattuso. And Giampaolo was formerly of Sampdoria and knows Lucas Torreira very, very well. But that's as far as this goes, to my knowledge. And I've spoken to some people... um, uh, within sort of Italian football, some journalists who join me on my Simply Serie A podcast on a weekly basis. And they agree with me that there's not much substance to this and it's absolutely nothing to worry about. Now, going back to the comments uh, that Terrera made uh, regarding life in England, this is what he had to say. He said, I don't know if there are many things that I enjoy. I think I had a better time in Italy. England is a totally different world. The language barrier has stopped me being able to relate with my teammates and the people it is very difficult when you can't have dialogue and then there is the weather you go out in the morning and it's cloudy you arrive at your house in the afternoon and it's cloudy again we are from Uruguay and we are used to always or almost always having the sun but as the years go by I'm going to adapt so Lucas Torreira just talking about the lifestyle change he's not said anything that most other foreign players haven't said when they've come to the UK, it is a very different lifestyle uh, to that in Italy or in Spain or, or in South America, or wherever you want to, uh, you know, compare. When it comes to the weather, that is a big deal to these people. And I'm, I'm, I, I get it, you know, I personally prefer it when the weather's good. It puts me in a better mood. And so I can totally understand why going from sun, sun, sun to cloud and rain can can have its toll on, on someone. And, and Lucas Torreira is just speaking openly and honestly. Like I said, I don't think the Milan links are anything to be concerned about. Um, and it's just a something out of nothing. Uh, let's move on to Dennis Suarez. He's been talking about the injury problems that plagued him during his time at Arsenal. Uh, he says that he's still trying to get fit and he still has no idea what his future holds in some quotes that he gave to Cadena SER, a Spanish outlet. He said, I'm still recovering from the injury. I'm practically fully recovered. On the 16th day of arriving at Arsenal, I was not even 50%. It was a year to forget, but also to learn. I have been in Barcelona for two months recovering from the injury and nobody from Barca has told me anything. So, you know, the Denis Suarez signing was a disaster. Let's be honest. It didn't work out. We were all bitterly disappointed that he was the only player that came in in January. And unfortunately, he didn't have any sort of impact in the team. But this all makes sense now. It makes sense as to why Unai Emery wasn't selecting him. We get it now. We totally understand uh, why. It doesn't mean that the signing should be excused. For me, it was a poor, poor signing. And, and, you know, due diligence should have been done to make sure that when bringing Suarez in, he was ready to play. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, But it seems like a bit of a shame. He's no doubt a talented player and he's kind of been left in the wilderness now. Doesn't know what's going on at Barcelona. Uh, Never really made it at Arsenal due to injury. Um, So yeah, it was... was, uh, What's the word? uh, Reassuring to read those comments from Suarez in the sense that we now know from the player himself why things didn't work out. It felt like the statement he gave when we initially terminated the loan deal was uh, a little bit vague in my eyes. So uh, pleased to have a little bit more clarity on that subject. It's looking increasingly likely that Laurent Koscielny will leave Arsenal this summer and the club are said to want in the region of £10.5 million to put towards a replacement. Now, if we can cash in and get £10.5 million for a player of Laurent Koscielny's age, for a player with Laurent Koscielny's injury problems then I would be happy with that. I'd be happy with it, providing the fact, uh, providing, sorry, that Arsenal are going to go out there and spend it and put it towards a replacement, a younger replacement. But if it's just to, you know, to get him off the wage bill, then I'm not really sure where I stand on this because 
He is the only bit of experience, along with Socrates, he is the only bit of experience that we have in that Arsenal defence. And whilst I totally acknowledge that he's got lots of injury problems, he's a real fitness concern, he was pretty good in the second half of the season. He was as good as any other defender at the club. And I didn't expect that. I thought Laurent Koscielny was finished after that Achilles injury. And it took him a few games to get back into the stride of things, understandably. But I think overall, um, he did pretty well in the second half of the season. Not much else in terms of fresh transfer speculation uh, today. The, the links continue to be made with German under-21 uh, goalkeeper Marcus Schubert. He'll be taking part in the under-21 uh, championships this summer and it's said that he'll make his decision on his future after the conclusion of that tournament. Um, but it is also being reported that the likes of Bayern Munich are interested as well. So it's not uh, as straightforward as some would have you believe. Arsenal are in the hunt uh, for the Dynamo Dresden goalkeeper, but so are some other teams uh, in Germany as well. So it remains to be seen whether we'll be able to get that deal over the line. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the Copa America is starting. Thank God, some decent football to watch because I know a lot of us have been starved and deprived of football. I've even been watching the Cricket World Cup, uh, such as been my, um, you know, my boredom, I guess is the right word. Uh, but yet, the Copa America is starting. It's going to be a very interesting tournament. Always is. Lots of passion in South America. And uh, I'm really up for it. Having gone and watched the Diego Maradona movie last night. What a film. I would go as far as saying the best sports film or sports related uh, bit of TV that I've ever watched. It's unbelievable. There's so much unseen footage and it really tells the story of Maradona's rise and fall brilliantly um, with lots of like I said, unseen footage, lots of exclusive interviews. Diego's telling the story himself. It includes interviews with his former wife, um, with his uh, personal trainer, with the Napoli president at the time. And it really focuses on that period that he spent at Napoli, which is uh, the most significant period in his illustrious career. There's no question about that. It's a fantastic f film. I've written a little review on it over on chroniclesafc.com, so check it out. You will not be disappointed. If you've got no plans this weekend, head out and see it. I promise you, it is fantastic. We'll be back on Monday with another Chronicles AFC Daily. Until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy uh, the break, and uh, hopefully the weather picks up a little bit. Take care.